What's up ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Oh Nerd You Didn't, a series where I react with you on the latest nerd news, nerd crazes, and nerd videos. Today's episode is Life is Strange Before the Storm, Chloe and Rachel trailer. So if you're unaware, Life is Strange is a game that came out a few years ago, and it's based around a girl who is able to control time. She she doesn't realize at first how to use her power, but she's able to go back in time and change events. And there are things that happen in that story uh, that change everything. And it gives you, it's one of those games where it gives you the choice to decide to go on this path, to decide for this to happen. But keep in mind that there is a butterfly effect in every decision you make. There's repercussions to that. Well, this, this game is a prequel to that, and instead of starring the main star of the original game, which was Max, but in the prequel, this game that we're gonna watch the trailer for, you play as her best friend, Chloe. And in Life is Strange, the, the original game, Chloe mentions about her past and things that have happened to her that have led her to that point. That's what this game uh, the, this prequel is exploring. It's exploring Chloe's past, it's letting us as the viewer see what made her turn into the very boisterous, confident Chloe that we see in Life is Strange. I know it's made by a different studio and that concerns me a little, but I also know that the makers of the original game are working on Life is Strange 2, so that's why they can't work on this prequel. Anyway, let's Watch this trailer. I think that Chloe oh. is a compelling character because she's pretty wounded in, in, you know, lots of ways. She's gone through a lot of things. Working with Ashley's been awesome. She has a very personal viewpoint on who Chloe is what her voice is like, how she relates to all the other characters of Arcadia Bay. Hi, my name is Rihanna DeVries. I play Chloe Price in Life is Strange oh. Before the Storm. There's something oh. so relatable okay. about Chloe, and I think that's why so many people love her. It's because we all have something in us or something about her that we either want to be or already have. I took Chloe very personally. I tried to play her as raw and as uh, close to heart as possible. I think just the rawness of her hurt and her pain is the thing that makes her such a dynamic and lovable character. She has this, this kind of wicked wit that she uses to alienate others, keep people at bay. You could actually be good at this if you lost the attitude. My attitude is what makes me special, David. I think she's someone that doesn't wow. want to let on. Hang on. Can I just go and say that I don't know if that sentence was meant as like sarcasm, uh, but my gosh, she sounded very dull, didn't she? <laughs> that was that was crazy. I hope that was on purpose. Otherwise, um, I'm gonna I'm a bit concerned about the effort put into this uh, prequel. Affected by others, but absolutely is finding Rachel at this point in her life was so really so this girl plays for We've embraced this idea that each girl kind of desperately needs something that only the other person can provide at this specific point in time in their lives. So getting to see that that need, that vulnerability. This guy takes his job very seriously. <laughs> and the, the strength and the kind of power that the characters pull from each other, it's incredible. We heard about it in the first game, obviously a lot that's a lot of what motivates Chloe. And being able to actually see it and have the players experience it, I think will be really special and really fun. A lot of fans I know are really concerned about what happened between Rachel and Chloe and exactly how it broke down and how many layers their relationship has. Just having a hand in bringing that to life has been an honor. I've had my own mental perspective of who Rachel must have been and, and that kind of thing. So 
getting to actually see her fleshed out and to be able to read the interactions that she and Chloe have has been really awesome. And the team has done a really great job of crafting those scenes. I got to work with Phil, who was the voiceover director for Liz One. He asked me questions. I think the girl who's playing Chloe here, the girl there, I don't think she's the same girl who played Chloe in the original. And I'm not sure if that means that the girl who did the voice of Chloe in the original is doing the prequel or she's out altogether. But I'm pretty damn sure this is not the same girl who did Chloe in the original. ...that would prompt certain emotions from me so that I would read the lines a certain way. It becomes a, a very personal matter. It's not just playing around anymore. I'm feeling everything that I'm feeling. It was the, the junkyard scene in episode one where Chloe is just like crying and beating on cars and things. Was that and episode Phil one? had told me huh. um, as a motivation, he just said, you can't be with someone you love anymore. And immediately that person popped into my head. And since then, it's just been holding on to the memory that would be of, tough. Mm. How, of, who, of who they are to me and how they feel in relation to me. That's been driving how I play Chloe for a lot of this. I'm sorry for whatever so, I okay, did. So, because I remember there was a car, um, broken down car area. I think probably this area, actually, um, in the original game. And I think, actually, now that I think about it, I think Chloe did mention that she remembered spending time with Rachel at this car yard. So that expl that makes all the sense now. We didn't do... Today was the best day I've had since... since my dad died. And I screwed it up somehow. Like, I screw everything up, because I'm a fucking screw-up. Chloe, please. I don't want to be alone anymore. Imperfection is something that we embrace with this story, for sure. Rachel Amber has a power and a charisma and a, and a meaning to Chloe that is, you know from the first game if you played it, uh, in incredible. We don't know for sure that it's purely good. We hope with the story in Before the Storm to raise this question of, it can be amazing to meet a person who has that power. It's not necessarily a, a good thing all the time either because people are inherently complex. Rachel Amber is not just a hero to Chloe. She might not be a hero at all to Chloe. The player's decisions will play a, a big role in determining exactly- Wait, 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 wait. Our decisions mean whether or not Rachel's a good influence to Chloe or not? But we're playing as Chloe, right? So maybe, Maybe the reason why Chloe liked Rachel so much was because she was even more adventurous and dangerous than she was. And maybe that's something she liked, but at the same time, that could be dangerous. But it also was very warming to Chloe because it was this escapism for, from her pain that she, she deals with, maybe. Exactly what their relationship is like and what kind of an impact Rachel's going to have on her. Mm, okay. Episode 103 out on August the 31st. You know, wouldn't it be great if it comes out on the uh, the 1st of September as the PlayStation free game of the month? That would be awesome, but I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt it. You know, I, I'm i looking forward to it. I, I, I will admit that I'm more interested in Max's, well, I was more interested in Max's story because of her powers. And I know that in this game, there isn't gonna be any powers. Um, so I don't know how much this game is really going to grab me because I have a feeling it's more just uh, just the relationship side and rebellion and stuff like that. I hope you've enjoyed watching that with me. That is the trailer for the prequel of Life is Strange. Uh, and I, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, a comment and a share and a subscribe if you like as well. And I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.